Although the LG C1 doesn't have the OLED EVO technology implemented on the more expensive G1, is the picture quality close enough such that you can save some money and just get the C1? Let's find out in this review. Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Thieu, and this is the 55-inch LG C1 OLED. If we look into the service menu, it uses an O20N chipset, which is the same as that implemented on the Step-Up G1 Gallery series. Based on the spectral power distribution of this 55-inch retail unit, whose panel originated from LG Display's Paju factory, the C1 is not equipped with the EVO panel found on the G1. But that's not to say that other C1s, especially later in the year, won't be getting the more efficient OLED panel, given that all manufacturing lines in the Guangzhou fab will eventually be converted to produce the newer panel. The subpixel structure remained the same as on 55-inch OLED TVs over the past couple of years, with no significant improvement in the DCI-P3 color gamut coverage at 96% UV, while Red 2020 coverage came in at 72%. Generally, we find Paju OLED panels to have better uniformity than those from the Guangzhou plant, and our 55-inch LG C1 was absolutely outstanding in this respect. Bright uniformity was pristine as we cycle through full-field grey slides, exhibiting no noticeable dirty screen effect, banding or color tinting. We also specifically checked for the Venetian blind effect in this scene from our planet in Dolby Vision on Netflix, and didn't see any on our review sample. Dark uniformity also ranked among the best we've encountered too, even down to 2% above black, preventing HDR content with purposely elevated black floor from becoming a banding fest. While on the subject of near black, LG has slightly increased the dithering strength on the company's 2021 OLEDs, including the C1 to improve gradation and reduce overshoot or flashing artifacts, although this can cause some dark scenes to manifest crawling noise if you sit close enough to the screen. Perhaps this is also the reason why LG has implemented a factory 1D LUT which made shadow detail darker than reference out of the box, which thankfully could be corrected with calibration. Color accuracy was excellent after calibration, with an average delta error below 1 on this color checker SG chart where 140 patches were measured, and no inaccuracies exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of delta error 3 for moving video content. As a result, general colors including skin tones looked natural and accurate in real-world viewing across a variety of content we watched on the C1. Next, I would like to thank UK electrical retailer Compton Moore for sponsoring this video. If you are thinking about getting a new television, even if it's not the LG C1, please support this channel by considering buying from them. Call 0113 244 6607, mention HDTV test, and you will receive great price and service. Thanks again for your support. Even with true motion disabled, the C1 presented 24p movies without telecinic judder as long as cinema screen was engaged to activate 55 pull down. New for 2021, LG has implemented a cinematic movement option which aims to smooth out the 24p stutter inherent in films, but without introducing overt so opera effect or SOE. From our testing with 24 frames per second movies, cinematic movement worked well, reducing 24p stutter without incurring significant interpolation artifacts. Because we are purists, we could still spot mild so opera effect or SOE, especially in scenes containing fast movements but we are confident that the new cinematic movement setting will go down well with viewers who cannot tolerate the traditional 24p stutter, which is more obvious on OLED due to the self-emissive technology's near-instantaneous pixel response time. For higher frame rates, such as 60 frames per second content, disabling true motion yielded a motion resolution of 300 lines on this horizontally scrolling test pattern from the FPD benchmark disk. Engaging true motion would more than double motion resolution to 650 lines, but the higher the setting, the more the interpolation artifacts that would be introduced. True motion user selection allows you to set the judder and the blur separately, or enable 120Hz black frame insertion through the OLED Motion Pro submenu, which, together with frame interpolation, can increase motion resolution to 1080 lines or even higher. On 2021 OLED televisions such as the C1, LG has developed a compensatory low-luminance LUT to reduce the shadow detail loss caused by 120Hz 
black frame insertion on last year's models. From our testing, engaging OLED Motion Pro on the LG C1 still caused shadow detail to look darker than reference, but it is certainly less severe than doing the same thing on the CX or C10 OLED. Note that for some reason, the compensatory LUT would be bypassed if a picture preset had been auto cal resulting in crushed shadow detail similar to that seen on 2020 models. As always, we strongly advise against using OLED Motion Pro 120Hz black frame insertion with HDR content, since even the least aggressive setting of low would cut peak brightness by at least 200 nits, leading to overall darker EOTF tracking. While not publicly advertised, OLED Motion Pro can now be deployed on the internal apps on the C1, which is an improvement over last year's CX where the setting was greyed out. Like on previous LG OLEDs, the true motion interpolation algorithm on the C1, even with the Jada and the Blur both set to zero, was easily tripped up by 50Hz broadcast programs we get in the UK and other PAL regions, exhibiting the odd microstutter on head movements and hand gestures. Upscaling was very good on the LG C1, retrieving nice detail from this SMPT RP133 test card in 576i, with only mild junk pixels, ringing and fizziness, allowing standard definition programs to look passable, if you even care about sub-HD content these days. The OLED TV suppressed jaggies in video-based interlaced material effectively, as well as detected and processed 3 2 and 2 2 cadences correctly in film-based interlaced content. The C1 also passed full chroma bandwidth from this 1080p test pattern from the Spears and Munsil HD benchmark disk. The LG C1's smooth gradation decontouring filter was more effective than the intermittently broken one on the CX, though we would advise you against going higher than the lower setting to prevent scrubbing away a lot of fine detail. After running in our LG C1 retail sample for at least 100 hours, peak brightness measured 760 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point, and 130 nits full fill. Note that the 760 nits was achieved in the HDR cinema picture mode which measured about 50 nits brighter than filmmaker mode, which is slightly strange considering that no such difference existed on the CX on the latest firmware at the time we filmed this video in April 2021. Anyway, compared side by side against an LG CX manufactured in February 2021, we struggled to see any meaningful improvement in HDR peak brightness for reasons we've explained previously in our LG G1 review. LG has relabeled its dynamic tone mapping control as HDR tone mapping on its 2021 OLEDs including the C1. There's no major change in what the setting does. It analyzes the incoming histogram on a frame-by-frame -frame basis, retaining more bright highlight detail at the expense of APL, but unfortunately also brightening other middling scenes too much which deviates from the creative intent so we would generally turn off LG's dynamic tone mapping in the interest of accuracy. We checked out My Hunter in Dolby Vision on Netflix, and saw no floating blacks in the end credits, both before and after calibration. Even though native 10-bit gradation wasn't the cleanest judging from this frame in the Martian, the smooth gradation decontouring filter worked well to smooth out the posterization in the sky behind Matt Damon, even on the lowest setting. While we're at it, we also noticed that in game mode, Enabling smooth gradation had little to no effect, probably because lots of video processing had to be disabled to keep input lag low. Talking of which, with game optimizer engaged, input lag at 60 frames per second measured below 10 milliseconds with boost mode enabled, and below 5 milliseconds at 120 frames per second. Note that in order to activate OLED Motion Pro black frame insertion, Boost mode, which simulates receiving a 120fps signal from a 60fps source, has to be disabled first, after which input lag would increase by half a frame to 21 milliseconds at 60fps, and 13 milliseconds at 120fps. Next, we ran the NVIDIA G-Sync Pendulum demo using an RTX 3090 card, and the result was smoother than a mixture of butter and KY jelly. At 4K 120p, the C1 resolved full 3840x2160 resolution according to this test pattern from Ryan Masiola, but exhibited significantly more posterization than usual on this 10-bit quantization RAM from the Display HDR app. Thankfully, this could be rectified by going into the ThinQ home dashboard, editing the HDMI input, then changing the icon to enable PC mode, 
which resulted in noticeably smoother gradation. Applied to actual HDR games, this PC mode method worked a treat to reduce posterization in the character selection screen of the recently released Outriders during the rare times we managed to get onto a server. There were other benefits to enabling PC mode for playing games too. Outside of PC mode, chroma subsampling was capped at 422, so engaging PC mode was necessary to restore full 444 chroma. In addition, using PC mode together with the HDR Cinema Picture preset allows you to enjoy the highest peak brightness the C1 is capable of, instead of settling with Game Optimizer mode which is again around 50 nits dimmer on a 10% window. Just like black frame insertion, PC mode added half a frame of latency, resulting in an input lag of 21 milliseconds at 60 fps, or 13 milliseconds at 120 frames per second. VRR gameplay was smooth and responsive, not to mention visually beautiful owing to OLED's self-emissive properties of true blacks and vibrant colors, which were not diminished by engaging game mode. If you are experiencing over-brightened near black gamma in VRR mode, LG Electronics has provided a fine-tuned dark areas control to let you improve things on a game-by-game -game basis. VRR flicker remained unsolved since it's a hardware issue at the panel level, although it's mostly apparent in lower frame rate games, or on static menu screens rather than in actual gameplay. HGIG support was well implemented on the LG C1, providing a hard clip of 800 nits at source, which is the same as last year's CX or C10 OLED. Unlike other OLED manufacturers, LG continues to offer 4 HDMI 2.1 ports on its higher-end OLEDs including the C1. The HDMI 2.1 bandwidth is 40 gigabits per second instead of the full 48 gigabits per second permitted in HDMI 2.1, but this is becoming less and less of a sticking point given that neither the Sony PS5 nor the Xbox Series X supports 48 gigabits per second anyway. Design-wise, our LG C16 retail unit is finished in off-white at the back, but there's also a C14 variant with dark grey rear panel, which may be exclusive to certain retailers. Let's sum up. While the LG G1 and in particular the Sony A90J have hawked all the early limelight due to their brighter OLED panel, the smart money should be on the C1 which comes surprisingly close to matching the picture quality of the more expensive G1, only slightly losing out in brightness terms. Compared with last year's CX or C10 OLED, the LG C1 delivers improved true motion frame interpolation with less artifacting especially for 24p films, a more usable 120Hz black frame insertion with less crushing of shadow detail, a more effective smooth gradation decontouring filter, as well as marginally better near black handling. Despite some hardware issues with VRR gamma response, particularly near black, it is very difficult to look past the LG C1 as our top pick for a gaming TV in 2021. Compared to other OLED brands on the market, the C1 offers the lowest input lag. 4 HDMI 2.1 sockets for hooking up a PS5, an Xbox Series X, and a gaming PC with an eART port to spare. Well implemented HDIG support, working VRR, G-Sync, and FreeSync out of the box, and most importantly, is not hamstrung by a third-party MediaTek SoC with uncertain VRR at 4K 120Hz capabilities. Unlike the brighter LG G1 and Sony A90J, the C1 is also available in a gamer-friendly 48-inch screen size. Even though it's near-black cleanliness, native gradation and 50Hz motion interpolation could still use some improvement. These minor shortcomings do not stop the LG C1 from being a great all-rounder, especially when gaming credentials and price are taken into account, and so it earns our highly recommended award. To watch more of our technical TV reviews, please click here for our playlist, and I will see you in the next video. Yeah.